Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a May reading wrap up. I have read a lot of books this month. I think I read somewhere around 14. I will edit that in post, but I read a lot. So I'm going to try to stick to about 40 seconds to a minute per book because I don't want this video to be like super crazy long. But if you want very, very in depth reviews of everything please check out my book instagram because i post wrap-ups with very very detailed reviews over there and you can also see what i read in real time both on my instagram and my goodreads so without further ado let's get into the video okay first i read a net galley book called the faculty lounge by jennifer matthew i really liked this it was about teachers and as an education major i just found it very relatable it's basically a story of how this one substitute teacher at the school kind of connected all of these teachers together and then he passes away and so it's about each character's kind of like dealing with his passing and how he connected all these teachers. I did really like it and I found it very relatable however I didn't like the writing it was very simple for me which I wasn't a huge fan of so I gave this a three out of five stars. It was super fun and sweet and I loved reading it on NetGalley. Then I listened to the audiobook of Divine Rivals by Rebecca Ross. I really liked this. I gave this a 4.5 out of 5. The only reason I took half a star off is because the world building got a little bit confusing. I didn't really get like why they were at war or like the whole thing with like the gods. Like I was a little bit confused by that. But I absolutely loved the romance between the two characters. I thought it was so perfect and just amazing. And I really, really liked the writing. The writing was very vivid and descriptive, which I always love, especially in fantasy or magical realism books. Okay, then we have The Near Miss by Lily Joseph, which is another book that I read on NetGalley. I loved the concept of this. I thought it was a super duper unique concept. However, I just don't think it was executed very well. I gave this a three out of five as well. I didn't really like the characters and there was a decided lack of side characters. So you were kind of only focusing on the two main characters, which is fine. But normally in a romance, I like it when there's some side characters to kind of like supplement. And even if there were side characters, they were very underdeveloped. And I just, I didn't really like the characters in this one, which is why it wasn't a perfect five, but I did think that the plot was really interesting. So I gave this a three out of five. Then I started my reading of the Percy Jackson series. So I read book two, Sea of Monsters, and I gave this a five out of five. I was so invested the whole time. I was literally on the edge of my seat. I loved it so much. Yeah, I no complaints. Also, I love how Persebeth kind of started to activate in this book. It, it definitely progressed further from that, but I just loved it. Okay, continuing with book series that I needed to finish, that was kind of my trend this May. I read Rivals. This was a reread, and this is the third book in the American Royals series by Catherine McGee. This was a reread. I remember not liking it the first time I read it, and I kind of felt the same way this time around. I gave it a 3.5. I think it's definitely one of the weaker books in the series because I feel like the drama between one specific couple is so just out of nowhere. Like it was like she needed conflict and she just pulled this one thing and was like, let's turn this into a plot point, which I didn't really love. And I also didn't really like Bee's character in this book. I feel like her character didn't really advance or develop that much in this book. Um, and so I didn't really like reading like her sections of the book and I also thought this one was just a lot more boring because it was very like politics heavy um, which normally I don't mind in fantasy but in this particular one I just wasn't a fan and then I read Percy Jackson the Titan's Curse I gave this a four out of five I did like it and I loved the plot I was just kind of more frustrated that we got all these new characters and then they're like barely in the book they either get killed off or kind of like push to the side um which anytime there's new characters introduced I want to spend time with them and meet them but I was just really frustrated that that happened in this particular book so that's why I didn't give it a perfect five but I still loved this one and was super duper invested throughout okay I did a very kind of in-depth review of this one on my Instagram but also in my spinner wheel chooses my reads video but then I read Rain which is the final book in the American Royal series and I was so disappointed by this book I gave it a 2.5 stars because I did like the ending. I thought the ending wrapped up nicely and there were some moments where I was invested. I was so angry with how the characters developed because I feel like we were working backwards and all of the plot lines in this book were plot lines we had already seen before. It felt just very recycled and almost rushed and I did not really like that. I didn't enjoy it. 
Um, I was very, very disappointed that this was the final book. I think if she had focused more kind of how she did the ending of the book, I think it would have been better. But if she had done the ending differently, I think that this book would have been like a one star for me. Like, I was not a fan of this one. Then I read The Battle of the Labyrinth, which is the fourth Percy Jackson book. And I gave this a 4.5. I loved the world building specifically in this one. I loved like learning about the labyrinth and everything. And I also feel like the Percibeth was definitely Percibething in this one. And I just love the characters and I loved the setting. Like I feel like setting it in the labyrinth made it so much more like high stakes and stressful for me. So I was very invested reading that one. I'm so excited to talk about this next book. Funny Story by Emily Henry. I have read all of, not all of Emily Henry's books. I haven't read Beach Read yet. The only one that I haven't enjoyed is People We Meet on Vacation, but all the rest of hers completely hit so hard for me. Like, love them. This one was no exception to that. I gave it a five out of five stars. I think also Miles is just very much like my type in men. So like reading about him was just, oh, chef's kiss. I loved it. I loved the banter in this one. I loved just like the unique storyline. I loved how our main character was a librarian. Like I just, I loved literally everything about this book. Like it is so good. Please go read it. It is absolutely phenomenal. And then I read the final book in the Percy Jackson series, The Last Olympian. This one is my favorite in the series. I also gave this one a five out of five stars. I cried a total of three times. Absolutely shattered me, floored me. Freaking amazing. Loved the Percy Beth in this one. The Percy Beth was so strong in this one and I can't wait to see how they progress further on in the other series. But I was super duper invested in this one. I think... Um, Sea of Monsters is my second favorite and then I think my third favorite would be The Battle of the Labyrinth but this one is definitely my favorite. I loved it so much. I love Rick Riordan's writing. He's just so like naturally funny and I love that about all of his books. Okay and then I did another reread. I did a lot of rereading this month I feel like. I, re I reread Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid. This book absolutely shattered me the first time I read it and I this this time around it also shattered me. I cried only twice which I feel like the first time I read it I cried like four or five times. I only cried twice this time and it was fun like going back and reading it like with my annotations. I just thought that that was super duper fun. This is my favorite Taylor Jenkins read book which I feel like is such an unpopular opinion. I feel like not a lot of people like this one. I love it. I relate to Nina Riva so much. I think Nina Riva is one of my favorite characters in all of fiction. Like I just I love her character so much and she speaks to my soul which is why I love this book so much. I yeah I loved rereading this. I definitely think it should be a tradition that I reread it every summer because it's such a summery book but don't let this cute happy cover fool you. It is so sad, so depressing. Then I read Bright Young Women. I got this from the library. This is by Jessica Knoll. I was so excited to read this because I heard about it and I was like, this sounds like a book that I would love and I did not enjoy it. I gave this two stars. I think there were just so many reasons why I didn't like it. I was so confused. I didn't like, normally I don't mind multi POV and like time jumps, but in this particular book, it just made it confusing. And I was bored at parts, like I felt like it was just very repetitive and boring at certain points. And then after reading some reviews of it, um, apparently the author didn't really respect the victims' families because this is based off of two real victims um, of, a, of a case like this. And she didn't really respect them or their families because apparently she put their full names in this book, which definitely I was like eh, that's a little that's a little questionable so that also kind of like lowered my rating so I give this a two out of five stars I was definitely like iffy on where I wanted to put it and reading other reviews helped me rate it a two so if you like true crime you might like this but it just depends and the last book I'm going to be talking about today is The Book Swap by Tessa Bickers I don't normally give NetGalley books a five stars I've only given one NetGalley book a five stars in the several that I have read. This one got a five star. So now I've officially given two NetGalley books five stars. This book is every book girl's dream. It's a second chance romance, childhood friends to lovers, second chance, but they rekindle their love 
through annotating books for each other which is so cute and also a trope that I really like that I feel like is not super popular but I always eat books up when they have this trope is kind of like the you've got mail trope that's what I call it it's when like the two characters are anonymously communicating over some other media like text or in this case book annotations and they don't know who the other person is I love that trope I love it. I eat it up every single time. And this book had that, um, where basically like they found these books in the little free library and then they started like annotating them back and forth for each other. It was so good. I cried twice. It is a beautiful story, not only for the romance, but also it just tells a beautiful story about grief um, and losing your best friend and how to, how to pick yourself back up from grief and how to live your life to the fullest. And I just, I loved it. I think it's beautiful. I think if you love books and you love words, you should read this book. It is it is absolutely phenomenal. Obviously, the month is not over by any means, so I will probably read some more books um, towards the end of the month, but that is all the books that I have read so far. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you check out my book Instagram below. I'm trying to hit 100 followers, and I'm very, very, very close, so please check me out. And then I also post on my TikTok and Goodreads about books as well. So if you if you like that book content, go check those out and tune in every single Sunday at 6 p.m. because that is when I post. And if you want more want more videos like this, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.